the Pandas, right? So we saw the NumPy yesterday. Similarly, Pandas is kind of a library, uh, which is the Floss library, okay? Uh, which is Floss one, that is your free library open source software, right? And it provides a high level performance for your data manipulation, analysis, wrangling, and whatever you want to do with your data structures, right? So this is your pandas. Okay. So for installing the pandas, you can just go with the install and you can just write pandas, but before that you should mention your pip or you can mention your conda over there, right? So that is not necessary if you're working with uh, Jupyter Notebooks, okay? So uh, there are data structures, right? So data structures are there in the pandas, we deal with some of the data structures because we uh, we are going to work with the data. So that is particularly called as some data structures, right? So three kind of data structures are there, okay? There are three kind of data structures, let me mention them. So there are three kind of data structures are series, data frame and the panels, right? You write it as the series, the data frames and the panels. Okay, these are the three data structures we are having. Okay, so let me define this as, let's say this is data. And let's make a dictionary. Say this is okay. This has been working here in the codes. So let's say this is my data structure, and there we have series. There we have. data frames, there we have panel, all right. So we have three of the kinds of this data there. Similarly, we have the dimensions of this. So this uh, data structures, like what the series, the series are dimension, the series are one dimension, the data frames are two dimension and like then the panels are the three dimension. Okay. So uh, just write a descriptive one so that you can remember it. So what I say this uh, series are nothing but the 1D labeled array all right we did with the array yesterday so this uh, series are nothing but the 1d labeled array similarly uh, this data frames these data frames are nothing but the two dimensional labeled array and we call this as mutual arrays right and so does we have this has the three dimension. Now you would be wondering why I have written it in the kind of a dictionary, right? So these are your uh, datas, right? There is some uh, invalid syntax in the line number. Anyway, uh, there might be some missing things. Okay. This is the missing one. Fine. So this is your data and I have made some of the things here, right? So you can just uh, see your keys, you can just find out your uh, values and like that. Right? You can just find out your values over this and you come to see uh, keys as the data structures, dimensions and the description and their values to be the series and all these things, right? So these are the values and the basic one, right? 
So the data structure contains of series data frames and panels as I said. So panels are nothing but the three dimension or we can say 3D labeled arrays, right? Now for like the numpy we imported this numpy as import numpy as np. Similarly here for the pandas will import this pandas as pd. That is important first of all. Okay. So import pandas as pd. And now we will discuss it. Uh, we will discuss one by one all the things that are series and data frames because these are much of the things to be used in. Okay. So we will use one by one. So what are series? So if we go with the definition series, uh, as you can see, is nothing but the one dimensional array like structure with homogeneous data, right? So if you write it as, so I'll say that series are a one dimensional array like structure with homogeneous data. All right, with homogeneous data, right? Like a numpy one dimension array, you know, like one, uh, this one, numpy one. So, for example, you can say, as let's say we did yesterday, that is import your numpy as np, and um, let's just say that this is an array one, two, three, four, and let it be anything. So this is a one dimension array and that is your series, right? we can call this as a series, okay. So we can perform many operations on this series and we can just check it on how it works on, right. So we'll performing one by thing in, in the series, okay. So uh, when working with the data and when working with the series, uh, before working with the pandas, let me tell you that what is, how can you check your version to your pandas, so you just have to write as pd dot underscore underscore the versions and that is enough to get your versions right okay now we'll try to make series we'll try to manipulate on the series we'll go for the queries the deletions and all those things right so first of all we'll try to create a series from a list okay so let's say this is a number and um, this is a number list and um, this is some having some numbers let's say 10 20 30, 40, and that's 50. Okay, this is the number I'm having, and I want now the series. So, the syntax would be that you will be writing your data first, whatever your data is, and then you will be uh, writing down the index and the data type. Understood? So, what is your syntax? Let me just leave it as. So, always you will be starting with capital S, and you would write it as first the uh, data what you want and then you can just pass on this index values and the columns or oh, sorry not columns the data type you what you want okay this is how you can write this index of writing our series so we have number with us okay now i'll just write it as similar in the above statement so i want series and my data is the number my index i haven't defined anything Okay, I'm not defining anything now. Let it be as it is. We'll define in the next one. Okay, so this is data equals to number, and then I'm just running this, and you can see this that this uh, series, whatever has been generated, is 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are nothing but the index values of this 10 to 50. All right, and you are getting a data type by default is kind of an integer of 64 bits, right? That's okay. So if you go for the size, uh, for checking the item size, so what will that? That will be eight. We read yesterday, right? Okay. Now let's say I'm making this series with the same data, but assigning some index values. So we have five. Uh, you can say five of the numbers, so I'll assign it as let's say six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then also assign the data type now, and I'll say this to be a flow value. So 
So you can see now that this 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 is having some float of the values of float 64 and the index values to be from the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, right? This is how we use the series from a list. Similarly, we can make a series from any, uh, you can say, a dictionary or we can make a series from any uh, NumPy arrange. Let me show you. So let's say that I'm making a series with a NumPy arrange or NumPy uh, particularly. So this is now array. And I say this to be 1, 4, 16, 25, and 46, something is missing. 9 has been stopped. Okay, so these are uh, just an array over there, right? And now let me write the index to be np dot range and let this to be from the 2 to the length of uh, there is no such length. So let's say 1 to 6. Okay. And data type is understood, right? So what you can see is uh, we are having a series of some 1.0, 4.0 and some values with some of the index values. So I made this index to be an arrange of 1 to 5 numbers and I am getting that. I, I made this uh, array to be 1 to 25 there and this uh, uh, data type also be flowed. Now we have a dictionary called as data. Right? We, have, we have a dictionary called as data. So let's make a series with that. So we will write this as data is equals to data. Right? Uh, itself data is there. And meanwhile, you can index your values. You don't need to write anything when you are creating with a dictionary. You just run this and you will be getting your data structure to be series, data frames and panels, your dimensions to be 1, 2, 3, your description to be uh, this kind of thing, right? And then you can check on the data type to be object. So what do you have got that? If you write an integer, you will be getting an int64. If you write a float value, you will be, or uh, if you are, if you are writing a float, you will be getting some float values over there and if you write a string over there, you will be getting an object. Alright, so this is how it works out. Similarly, uh, you can make things from your, uh, uh, you can say tuples and like this, right? You, you can make on the series with any of the followings. Like for the, whatever we have did, like uh, the sets, right? Now, <coughs> You can find the index value of any series uh, just by writing the series name and then dot the index and you will be getting the index of like that. Suppose uh, this is an series and I just assign this as an x. So this is your x, right? But if I check on the index values of x, so the index values of x is data structure, dimensions and the descriptions. Similarly, I can find out what are the values of x. So these are the values of x. Okay, so you can check it on and you can write like this. Okay, fine. Similarly, let's say this R one to be a uh, random of some five numbers, and this R two. to be a random of again 5 values ok so we will be taking some r1 and r2 that's good and we will make one o or let's say uh, in this box there or and that to be a range of the length of R1 uh, that's uh, okay so the range will be coming 5 so let's see OR is okay Uh, 
and let's see R1 so that is having some 5 numbers and what about R2 this is again having some of the 5 numbers right so this is your uh, this kind of uh, data right this is your some random values over there and what we'll do is we'll generate two of the series so we'll say this as CD1 series 2 and we'll write this as PD dot series of R data to be data to be given as uh, R1 and index values to be OR. Similarly, we writing a more series over there. And we need this data to be R2. This index values to be OR. So we'll just see our data now. S1, uh, this is our S1, and like that. Okay, before printing S2, let's see. So this is your S1, right? You are having your index values from 1 to 5, and you are having your numbers over there. Now you can index out the values, like right? let's say S1 of 3. So in the beginning, S1 of 3, that is this right? 1.3 and something values. You can just more index on things to reverse out your by the two, right? The simple slicing and the things we saw yesterday too also. So we can pass on this to, to uh, that is how we can get the values. So you can just write on things to get it understand, right? So this is just an indexing method. Similarly, uh, I can just pass on this S2 to print out there and this is your S2, right? Okay. Now, what I mean to say that we can perform some operations on this string, uh, on this uh, series, just by adding them up, right? We can perform this by subtracting from them. We can also perform some multiplications on them, right? We can do these things. Similarly, uh, we can append any values or not. So we can use this appendations or not. We can just write uh, add any values or not in the series. So we can add, let's say, this S2. Length of inner passes implies five. Okay. So one to seven. This is your S one. S of three. This values will be changed up now. So uh, we can just write on this as S1 plus S2, S minus 1 and all these things. Now what I mean to say is that you can find out the differences from this operation when I started. You are getting some NAND over here. This NAND states that these are nothing but some null values or you can say it's no values are there right on. Okay. So that is called NAND, right? So it is 5. It is having some 6 elements. It is having some 5 of the elements, right? So there is no 6 element here. So it it cannot add anything with this. So this is an uh, value over there, right? Meanwhile, you can just index on these things, right? Let's say 2 and let's say this of S2 of 2. You can add on those things, right? So these are the uh, operations you can perform with a string, right? You can, uh, let's say you want to drop this sixth position. So what you'll do is, you'll be just using this drop, S2 drop, and you'll write 6. 
that is the sixth position will be dropped down right so like this you can uh, manipulate your series you can just do anything else you can just use it as a add functions to to add on those values and you can write like you can do and that okay so there is a uh, subtraction multiplication division and like things of that yeah for getting a statistical uh, description of these data what you can do is you can pass on the media and you can pass on this uh, mean to find out things right so like let's say you pass on s1 dot max or my s1 dot mean sorry mean s1 dot minimum That you can pass on to get some of the values. Even if you can pass on S1 or median. So you can see your values by passing these things and it's getting all the data. Right? So what you understood that you can work with the series, you can just make anything there, right? You can also create an empty series just uh, if you don't write any of the things, you'll be getting an empty series. Okay. Uh, so you can make a lot of things with the series as you can see, right? So we can retrieve uh, data using the labels, we can retrieve the data using the indexing, we can find the sum and all these things, you can also find the sum of this S1 and you'll be getting the sum, right? So this is all about the series. Now we'll come to deal with that data frames, right? So if we call data frames, so what exactly are data frames? So data frames are, you can say, like a mixture or like a, a collection of some 2D data, 2D array or you can say as a tabular form or, or, or we can say a table of rows and columns okay that is exactly 2d uh, structures right so now let's start with the data frames all right so syntax is again same you just you can write on here uh, what are the syntax here if i just write so here you can write as pd dot data frames and that is how you can write first your data and then you can write your index values then you can write your columns you can write your data type you can write index column and that's it right of things right you can pass on these things to get up there right so these are your data these are your data frames you can see right so let's make a small data frame okay we have made one data frame with the help of this dictionary we have seen uh, this we have this data as our dictionary so what we'll do we'll try to make a data frame from this so i can just write this df equals or you can just print out that this is pd dot data frame and that is uh, data here is my data okay and this run this so you can see this data structure dimensions and the description over there so what we made that series is one dimension and is having one d labeled array that are mutable the data frames are two dimensions and having two d labeled array and you can see right this is one side and this is one side you are getting a 2d label right this is a label one this is a labeled one that is how you write so uh, let's make one more data so let's say so we countries and let's say this to be the gym or we can take India we can take Brazil okay and let's take on the capital From this, we can take on Brussels. We can take this New Delhi. Is it Brazil? Captains. Brazil. Population is around six. 
say any particular values to be there, right? Not much. Okay, so this is a kind of uh, dictionary again. I'm saying this as df, um, that is data frame, and this is I'm writing it as data frame, and let's say this data and columns, define the column names to be this country, capital, and this population. So even if you don't define, that is not an issue, we will be getting that because this is a dictionary. But still, I am just giving you an overview of how you can define it. So this is a kind of uh, populations and all those things, right? And at last you can just print your data to see how it looks. So this is how your data will look like, right? You can just also pass on this here to look better. So this is your country and some things are there. Like this. Who is this? Add me. Okay, so there has been a small error. Let's connect this. Capital. That's good. I can see this there. So It is not from any of the Okay. So we found this to be a dictionary of like that, right? So uh, I must show you how this dictionary works well because there is uh, there we have one data. Let me show you. So there we have one of the data. Um, that is like this okay so that is uh, having some uh, we are this, uh, these are the real time data right we have taken from this website and that is indian players batting average values or ranges you can say right so this is a dictionary particularly so we have player the span the matches innings and all those things right so how a dictionary plays an important role you can see like uh, let's say if i make a data frame of this so you could see that that is your batting, bat underscore average underscore Indian underscore players. So this is bat underscore average underscore Indian underscore players. So what you can find this is a tabular data what we have made with this help of a dictionary. Okay. So this is whole made with only of the dictionary what you can see here. Okay. So now see, this is a good data, right? We are having around 22, uh, 23 columns, okay, that including the zero, it's 23 columns, and we are having some of the, that's 23 rows, and this has like some columns are there. So you'll get into it later onwards, okay. Now, uh, first of all, let's see, whenever you deal with the data, so your first work always is to be get the information of your data. So to get the information, Say I'm writing it as so to get the 
information about your data. What you do is you just print your data name and you print the info. So you'll be getting the uh, info of that. Okay, so DF is my data where I'm having country capital and the population, so I'm getting this is like that. Okay, that is using some 200 bytes of storage. Okay, so the range index is three entries and I'm having some two columns. So that is your index value zero to two and some columns of three, right? So, and to get a statistical, to get a statistical output, you can say, or statistical info of your data. You can pass on this as described. So that will give a statistical uh, output that is population, counts, means, and all this. So you'll not get a good uh, one in this one. Okay, you will not getting a good description of that. So let me name it as uh, quick and Okay, so that is now great. Okay, so uh, what you can do is let me show you. So we saw when we just print on this Greg, what we saw that some 22 data has been printed at a time, right? So we don't want to see everything from this. What we'll do is we will try to find out the first five or first ten or whatever. I just want to see a glance of this data, right? So what I'll do, is, uh, basically what I'll do is I'm going to print out the head of that, right? So we'll write it as head. So this head will print the first five rows of your data so that you can get an understanding of what are the starting numbers, what are the starting things in, which are included in your data. So you can see some five of the values. So for getting the first five rows, you can just write on this quick and dot head and you can get it over there, right? Similarly, you can write on this uh, tail and you can get this last five values right so this can be used with this now if you want to make a particular column a particular column of any of this column let's say average or hs or runs or anything so if you want to make a particular column as a series because many a time you could be asked to make a column as a series how to represent a column as a series so to make a column as a series you will just have to pass on the you can say their data name and then you just give it indexing and write this here the column name let's say i'm writing span so i will get here a list of span there right so again that depends how much you want you want up to first five or like that right so that depends so you want first five or how much right so you can write it as and you can get your spanning set like you can represent anything in the series so what you are saying that this is a 1d array and this is the name of the series and this is the data type of that right so you can just take on the name also you can, okay similarly if you want to just get only the first one or only the first uh, row not to get out all these things so what you can write as this is correct dot head and you can pass on this one and that is your data right similarly you can go with the tails too so that is a general overview with the info that is general uh, uh, statistical with that is right okay so to find the number of columns in your data frame what you will do is that is columns and you will get it as these are your columns so to find the index values so there you will be writing as index and then the values sorry so these are the index values you can get it okay similarly you can get your column values too right you can just write that as a quick dot column dot values and let's say i'm only getting the first five so there's right so like this you can get your column values so there is some Errors. So let's say you just write the columns, or you can just pass on the value. Let's see, you will get in their values of this first five. So you can get the values right. So that is how you get th things over there. All right. So you can even pass 
to see that if, if any null values, null values you understand that any uh, blank spaces are uh, left in your data or not. Hmm? So you can pass it in the null values also to see whether these things lies in there or not. Like, okay, so you can write it as let's say your quick is having any null values and if it is there I just want to see the head so I can see all the false because this data is not having any null values so there you can see that these are nothing but the no null values or false are there right so that is how you can see this is null values it's containing or not so to see whether this is not containing any null values we'll just write as quick dot not null it's null and again you can see the uh, let's say now we'll see the tail of that so you can see that there are true values now true values state that there is no null values okay this i'm finding not null so i'm getting true values over there right if i write a false over there then this states that this is uh, having some null values okay this is false particularly right so we can even see uh, some of that right let's say uh, if you want to see a sum of this is null so we can write it as sum and we can found uh, that whether a, any null values are there in this or not so i'm getting that no null values are there right you can even find this as not null and you can even find the sum of this so you'll be getting that every particular column is having some 23 values right that is the number of rows we are having and exactly the number of columns so you can even check out with this graph plotting with this graph so you can just like uh, write this thing so for plotting a graph what we can do is we'll be working with c1 we'll be starting this don't worry not today tomorrow might be so we can just plot a heat map over there so we can just plot a heat map and let's say this is quick dot is null and let's say the c map to be uh, now there are c, c map states that it can be uh, different kind of palette or different kind of designs see we can say all right suppose let's if i say this as asm so this could be something different so this will give you a plotting of that and you can get it like this right what this says that this blue color is saying that this is zero now zero means that there is no null values okay so higher the color will be the higher or the true uh, true values will be there right so this state at the zero and this is nothing but there is no null values right you can now you can change your palettes and you can get anything right let's say i'm writing blues so i'll be getting it something different right that is how again this color states that this is a uh, uh, zero or there is no null values over there now you can write many things right let's say blues and underscore uh, r and you'll be getting something different so that is a reverse color of that blue right so there are a lot of things uh, you can pass on like there are what it is uh, that is one so there are almost around some uh, more than 100 of palettes to work on it depends on uh, which one is your uh, which one is uh, of your choice you can write a winter um, then you can. so my favorite is an orange one so i use particularly this so i use oranges uh, and this looks like this okay so that is a uh, good okay so this can be used as like then you can slice on the things on your data frame to work on like you can slice so to get a specific column or to find some range of columns what you'll do so for getting a specific column you can write let's say crick or crick uh, and then you can write some two brackets because you need to find some uh, particular columns so let's say i want to find this player i want to find this uh, uh, only the matches i want to see only the strike rates and the runs okay i want to see only these things so this is also a lot of coming there so let's say only the head of uh, the data that is the first five things i want to see and so i can see this ma agarwal uh, i think it's mank okay so having 11 matches strike rate of 55.97 and scoring some 974 runs right similarly there is a 
Bumrah or Ashwin. Okay, Ashwin has scored a good one. That's nice. 71 matches, some runs, and strike rate is also good. Similarly, so you can get all your data to find out. Let's say we want it from that tail. So, what is there? Hmm. So it says that is uh, so how to find that who is uh, who is having the maximum number of runs scored right so runs is having some uh, integer value right so what you can do is you can just find out that runs is equals to you can say this to be as crick of runs right you can say this as crick of runs and then you can see what is the runs dot what is the max value of this runs? And that is 7240, right? That is 7240. So you can find out that again with the indexing values. I'll tell you how you can find out that those things. You can find out those things, right? You can just use IDX, MAX, and you can find out the values over there. So no materials of max okay fine that is okay so integer is not having any max value though you just need to find it by the locating it that's right so you can just write it as Uh, there are various ways. So these are not an integer because it might be an integer, so I can find it out. So I'll dealing with those things. Don't worry. So I see that this is in seven two four seven two four zero, right? So if you pass on those things or previous things, what you can see that this is having some. If you write it as so, this says that this is having seven two four zero, right? So let me see this runs and let me see this. Uh, uh, true value. Let me see this. Uh, this equals equals to seven two four zero. So if we can just pass on the uh, type of runs, and we can see on what is this. So we found that this is a panda goes runs over there, right? So can we do it as np dot? Can we write this runs to be a array? Can we write this? So can we say this as an array? And can we now? Find it with the use of where, what we did yesterday. So can we find that where this runs value is getting seven two four zero? So it's saying in the sixth position rather than sixth index value. So in sixth, uh, in the sixth index, this value is coming to be seven two four zero. So can we not print this? Uh, can we print this of six right uh, to print out a particular? row to print only a particular row what you can do is you can we do like this crack of sixth so same columns okay so this is your sixth uh, you can say on sixth row okay so this is a particular Virat Kohli and we can find the number of runs to be 7 to 4 zero. that's exactly right okay so there are ways of finding many things right so this is the number of matches and 86 strike rate of uh, 57 that's good and that is you can find okay so to get uh, specific rows so this was an indexing with the help this was a uh, method of finding the number of rows with the help of an index location. So we we know the index location that is 6 So we use with this. Okay, if we don't know the index location We can just uh, find out using the location method, right? So that can be used to find out the things. Let's say I want to print the Sixth number I want to bring the seventh or eight. Uh, so I'll getting the six seven and eight yeah, as, as ratio, right? So you can find these things there as okay so this is uh, particularly the row index value or you can do you can say as row uh, slicings okay now we will try to see how to add any columns to our data right so we are having a df that is your country data remember this is your country data so let's say i am saying this country i'm adding a country code And I'm saying this to be okay. 
let's say uh, it's having 32 this is plus 9 1 and this is plus 5 5 and then I can see my df and then I can see a one more column as this country code right so I don't need this actually because this is well enough to be there right so what you can do is you can even delete this particular column so but for deleting you can just write d f and then you can pass your thing there right so that will delete the data and you can see your previous data again so similarly you can even index the location of your data you can just find out using let's say if i'm writing df dot i lock and that is i locate location you can say so let's say i'm uh, finding the first zero and then zero so this states that i want to find the index location of zero of zero so zero of zero is nothing but belgium right if i run this so you can see zero of zero is the nothing but the belgium over there so that is how you can get your values okay so to uh, find the number of uh, or to slice over the ro rows you can say so there you can just write it as let's say df of uh, 0 to 2 so there you can just slice things that is you only want the first two numbers or first two rows over there too okay they can write like this things and you can get it over okay so to add anything in in the rows or to add so to add a row in your data frame we saw how we can add a column over there so to add a row in your data frame there is a method called as append right there is a method called as append and you can add it like that so let's say if i copy this data if i just change some things there hmm. So let this countries to be Japan and Russia and let this capitals to be Tokyo and Moscow. Let the populations to be 14.45 crores and this is going to be okay so now df1 to be the data frame of this you can find your data like this right uh, having some values over there and you can even find out your event you can find, say your index to be one or two uh, that is or let's say this to be three or four and that is index right. so that is three and four we are getting your index values and right so now our main goal is to add on this uh, three four with this zero one two okay so what we can do is we can write a new data that is df2 and that would be a df dot append the values of df1 right and then we can check on this df2 and it will be right zero one two three four and it's having some data right so this is uh, you can how add on the number of rows in your then even if you can generate the if you focus on that now if you just look at if you just you find to see the real time data if you just focus on to find out the real time data there so you can find out to how to generate a random numbers and how to uh, just make so how this things works on how this number of random uh, data which is generated every day in google's right how this thing work there so there how they work let's say any random numbers is to be taken over there 
say this is random and uh, this is in the end. Let's say this to be a phi. So if I see my R A N D N, RAN. So I'm having some five numbers, right? This is how RAN works actually. So let's say we are going to import random and this code to be there. Now I'm going to do some of the operations. So range of some nice. So let's do the random one. And then Okay, these are the numbers. Uh, let's say this code to append those values of x and let's say this to be g. It's here of x. Right? So if I take x, that would be a misconception. That will be nice. So done, I think that is good. So I can just print the code of the first 50. And we can find out some of the Google codes over there, uh, right? We can find out the things over there. So there are the codes. Now uh, to make these codes as a tabular sheet or as to be printed in any tab or let's say to make this, uh, how can I make this data store in my hard disk as an Excel sheet, okay, as a spreadsheet, as a CSV file or an HTML file. How can I make this data to be there, right? So what I can do is, what I can do is I will use some of the techniques to be so I can use some of techniques before using that. Let me uh, make you uh, compatible. You can say uh, like for the date range. Uh, let me make you compatible with the date range, right? So what are actually the date ranges? The date ranges are nothing but having some uh, ranges of dates, right? So if you write it as dates, um, so let me write it as pd dot date range. Okay, and if I say this to be uh, Today's date, let's say 2020. Um, this is today, 8, 1st, 2nd, and 1st. Second August. So 8, 2. That's good. And we'll see the periods. And I'm saying this periods to be 10. And why I'm doing so, I'll let you know why I'm doing so, right? So I'm saying this periods to be 10 now. So if I just print on my dates, I can see this to be having some uh, dates over there. It is two from today's date until the 10th, right? That is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And this is your frequency type, so dates over there, and the data types to be date time of 64 bits, right? Exactly. So these are the dates. Now why I have made this is actually, uh, let me show you why. So if I want to make a data frame of some random numbers or uh, random generated data, like uh, we have generated this random one, five, okay? We have generated this five. So like we ha if we have any random data over there, so how we can make these things, right? How we can just, uh, make some random inputs or we can say random data. Let's say let's just say this random to be hundred or let's say this to be we have ten right so let's say this to be hundred okay and then we'll reshape this to ten cross ten 
10 cross 10 and let's see this is random this is having some 10 cross 10 data that's good okay now we'll try to make a data frame where we'll give our data to be random and we'll say uh, that is our index values that is our index values should be now the dates okay and the columns should be let's say this should be the columns So you can see some random generated data that is your R A N D N and what you got there, right? So these are the dates as per the index values and this A B C D E and this S the columns. Right? So I have used split method. That split method basically what does this? This may this will make this in a list, right? So if you check your columns, you will be having this as as a list of some. Now it will not define why because because you are having your data in this column right so yeah you have not made any variable you have just assigned the value that this to be here so if you just write on these things as a b let me say this if i write a b and i write s split so you'll be getting a list of this individual numbers exactly right so that is your data frame now i'll be doing the same thing with this google codes how will i save these things so this is my x this is my uh, you can say codes over there and I'm having this data, right? Now, what I'll do is, I'll say these are codes and my codes to be an array of the code, what we have done, that is your, our code, okay? So that is codes will be an array of codes and I will reshape this and since this is a 10,000 codes, so I'll say this to be a thousand by 10. So, thousand rows by 10 columns, right? Nice. So, thousand by 10 would be fine. And then I'll say that these are nothing but the Google codes, and I'll save this as data frames. Uh, it's not there. I'll say my data to be the codes, and I'll say this columns. To be dates that's nice okay so if we just run this no problems so if we just see our g codes info or g codes head what you can see is the number of google codes generated per day here or like number of codes in generated in once let's say today is eight so how many codes generated today so how you can see that how many codes have been generated today so you can see that your g codes 2020 8 and this 2 so you can write it as and then you can check for the values of this and this will give you the number of codes that is generated only of today okay So you can see like that number of codes you have been generated in this particular uh, day. Similarly, you can pass on these things to see for the rest of the days, right? So like for the uh, 3rd August or 4th August or 5th August or like, you can see this number to be uh, very large, right? So I have only generated some, uh, only of some thousand, right? Some thousand uh, rows, okay? So that is your data coming there, right? So let's see the first five values. So these are the first five values. So similarly, we can just pass on these things as let's say, let's make it. Let's so even if we can pass on these things to write it as, let's say to be the codes of can see only length of yeah. I think it's a having a, and there is some thousand numbers right that's exactly because when you see your index values if you see g codes or the index values 
second five row, uh, oh, sorry, that would be the values. So these are the values of the index. Say that these are the index values, right? Because the design comes from, from 0 to 999, right? So let's see whether Okay. So these are the things uh, you can just write on. Now this was the first, uh, now this was all clear about how, what are data frames, what are series, how we can work on this series, how we can work with the data frames, how we can select on some of the particular data, how you can make your own random data. Right, and also what you can do is, you can convert these data to some different formats. Now that is called like some input or output operations on the C, uh, oh sorry, on the data frames, right? So, if you want to uh, just make your data output to your data frame or like in the Excel sheet or CSV format, right? So what you will have to do is, let's say I'm saying this G codes, uh, dot two underscore csv and let's say this to be g codes dot csv okay so i'm making this as csv one so let's say g underscore csv equals to csv so that will be converted in a csv file right similarly i can do it as g underscore html and You can write these things and you can just save on these things. Now it will be stored in your like uh, the drive what you have for the by default what the positions you are having. So it is saying that we will be having this in the IBM sessions. So we are having CSV if we just download these things we will be seeing how it works. So this is your HTML if you click on this you can see an HTML uh, just an overview of this 10. Right so we can see is the number of codes generated on 22 uh, August, 3 August, 4 and then like for that, right? We haven't given any of the time, so we are not, not getting any time over there, right? So it depends on how you write. So these are nothing from of the thousand codes over there you can see on. We have some random generated data and these are some of the thousand codes so it is around some ten thousand exactly because we are having some nine 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 codes over there in one particular row so there will be some of the codes right then that is an html file you can just make it or like a random one right similarly you will be having some if i say this one second so if we just check on for the downloads today's downloads um, that is the files so this is see you can see that this is the storing our excel sheet and you can check on these things for the first two to your 10 or 11 like things and you will be having some 999 rows there too like this right that is 999 and there you can see all these things. Now this might be having some unique values or non-unique values. They might be having some of the repetitions in this whole data, right? So then it could be possible that they might be ha having some random or like duplicate values in this. So that is not much of our uh, like issue to work on, okay? So our work was just to make some random data to get and see how this works, okay? Now, okay, so you can just uh, convert anything from any of the topics, or you can uh, like you can convert in JSON or in any PDF or like in different formats are there to work with. Now, you can read the data from the uh, you can say you can read the data from if you have any CSV files, you can read out the data from there and you can just see all the things. Right, how let me give an overview of that. 
So if I say If I say uh, to see most of the operations on this one, let, let's say I'm having a uh, CSV file or XF file. Even if you don't have, you can just bring it from the internet and you can just write it there. So let's say I'm bringing from this internet. So for that, you need to be having some C bound over there. And you can write it as so I'm loading some iris data and that can be written as sns.load data set so even if you don't have this data in your PC you will be getting there so down there um, you can just check it on this iris and this iris is particularly a flower which is having some four sorry three species on set of the Vosy color and the Vosy color right so even if you don't have data you can write this command and you will be getting this but before writing this SNS, don't forget to write this this one. Don't forget to write this, and then you can just run on this thing, and that will be working and same, right? So this is uh, Iris data, okay? And you can grab these things from the internet easily. So that will automatically come in this section of that. So there are several lengths, there are several widths, petal length and petal width and the uh, right hand side you are seeing is nothing but the species, okay. So uh, this species are of three kinds, these are of Setoza, these are of Vozikala, these are of Vozinika, right. And uh, you can just check on these things, so let's say uh, I want to see the number of columns this iris is having. So that would be just seen as iris of columns. You can see the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width over there. You can just see the more for more, you can just see the info of this, and um, that would be much better if you see the info. So that says that uh, sepal width is having some 150 normal values, say for the petal width and sepal width, and all those are having some of the normal values, and that's good, right? Because these is having these are having some uh, exactly everything is having some values over there, right? So that's good, okay. So you can just even check it like iris is null um, you can plot a map of that again so that's interesting to plot a map to see so this is uh, let's say this time I'll be using cubelix So I can see that this data is not a null one, right? So that is not good. Let's take something different. Yo, so this is looking good, right? Look at the pretty, uh, yeah, like a female color, right? So let's see if I could manage to see something different. That is also not good. So this could be fine. Uh, that is good. Okay. So we are having rainbow, right? And uh, right from the rockets and the things on. So this is not a null value. I can see there, right? Now we will try to see the number of occurrence of things over there, right? So we have been seeing that there are some of the uh, values. So how many species are there exactly? Okay. So to see on, so we are combining pandas with the seaborn here. Okay. I'm combining the pandas and the seaborn in one of the contents. So how many species are there to find out? How can you write that? It, you can just write on to find the number of species to be. It is iris dot the this uh, particular your. This is species, I think, S capital or might be small. You can write L species and you can see some 150 values. So there are not 150 species. There are some, I said that there are only three species, right? So there are not 150 species. So how, can, how we can find that? 
so that is again the method that is your this is your NB array right so yeah, you can apply here unique and you will get this this having only three kind of species Sedosa, Hosikalan and Virginica now with this data I can get the info that there are 150 values of so how many there are Sedosa, how many values of Sedosa, how many values of Virginica how many values of Hosikalan are there right so to find them we will have to do some sort of coding so what you can do is we can say this iris uh, iris and we can pass on this species and we'll check now where the values are coming as setosa so we are checking for the setosa so where the values are coming to be setosa so i'll be getting a true false uh, things out there right so these are some of the true results so what i'll do is i'll make a list of this and i'll just count the true values so i get the 50 setosa values out there okay like similar we can just check on for this number of Color. And that is also 50. So if these are 50, the another one will also be obvious in 50 because we are having only three of the species, two are 100, and the rest will just will be also 50, right? So even you can just see it without this writing on the things. That will uh, this is why we see the plottings. That will make our work easy. So what we can do is you can just write SNS or one count plot is there. So we can just count plot and we can just give this uh, we want to plot this species and our data is iris so we get that there are 50 setosa values there are 50 versicola and there are 50 versicola that's good right so you can write on this things so you can even use the c maps there it is working here check if it works here that's good uh, yeah it's not working no problem can you see palette if it is working or not so there has been some changes basically no need to okay fine so this is your 50 shadows Versicolor and the Virginica, right? That is cool. Okay. Now you can even plot a graph between the petal width and petal, uh, you can say petal length and the petal width, right? You have petal length and petal width. So you can plot the graph between the petal width and the petal length. How? You can say this you want some scatter plotting. You want some scatter plot and your data is petal width and your y is petal length and you say your data to be is so sorry there is one key missing petal width is not defined there so this is your graph of the petal with versus now that is uh, pretty messy there right so what we'll do we'll try to find this on the basis of the species that's good right okay so i've written the hue semantic hue semantic is nothing but a kind of a labeling which will make your understand which will make you uh, like will make you clear to understand that how uh, this graph has been or make you give an idea of this particular label right so you can see setosa you can see versicola you can see virginica right so we use these things uh, this particular data set is used in this machine learning process because we use this data set because 
uh, in machine learning we have some of the types as clustering, we have uh, linear regression, we have some logistic regressions to find on this thing, right? So uh, we use these things in a linear in machine learning where we can find for by clustering. So clustering is particularly a method there where you uh, make groups of your data, right? You make individual groups of your similar data. So just as you can see, Verzi color is here. This is Verzi Nika. So you can see this Setosa can be easily classified classified between or uh, from these two things, right? It is having some se separate category from this, right? You can even if you are from a biological background, you can find these graphs in your books, right? So this is, uh, you can get an area. So in machine learning, we just uh, plot some, uh, like if you do with that linear regression, this model can be built with linear regression too. So if you want to see uh, just a regression plotting of this, so you can even write as in a REG plot and then you can just write on your data. So you can see, argument is missing. Let's see this. So you can just plot on your So here you can see this regression line. So this particularly stands that how many, uh, what is the best fit line you are getting to train on your models. Hmm. So we try to make these things closer here to find the best fit line to just make it things. You can see this, as, I can make this large for you. Word can't be an expression. So there you can see that is not good enough. So what you can see is still it is not clear. Let's make it as ten cross eight. So here what you can see is this, these are nothing but some of the data points you can see, right? So these are the data points which are just coming closer to this. So what we do there is nothing but we try to make a best fit line where this, the number of errors, this points could be managed in one particular line to be everything, right? So we try to make those things in this uh, uh, machine learning parts. Okay, we are not much into that. So there you can see the number of types, right? Similarly, uh, we have a data of click, right? You have your data of click. So let me recall this to you. You have this data. Now to see uh, which, uh, apart from that index location, now to only see that which uh, player has scored the maximum number of runs, what you can do is you can use the method called as sort the values, right? So you can sort out the values according to your um, you, according to your requirements. Right? So you can just write on this correct and you can sort the values as so that is sort by and you can sort this values. So you can use the sort values also. The sort values and you will be writing by what? So if you want to sort by runs and you want to see some head of that. 
So it is saying that these are the values sorted by RAM. So see, sorting always uh, happens as the values of ascending order, ascending in an ascending order, always. Right. So that is right there. So if I write this ascending order to be false, okay, always you will be seeing as in an ascending order. That is. Always your values to be, uh, you always your values be in the least two grades. Okay, so if I write this ascending order to be false, so I can see a descending order, right? I'll be uh, seeing a descending order. So if I write click dot sort values by runs and write ascending or false, what you can see is the highest number of runs, and then you can see a this uh, difference, right? That is your uh, seeing, or uh, you, you can see that the uh, what do you can say is that? That is descending order, right? Then you can see the uh, index value is changing. That is first is 6 and then 4, 12, 13. So it sorts according to the runs. And nothing else has been sorted out. Everything will be as it is. Only these things, the runs will be sorted and nothing else, right? So this is how you can sort your values. You can sort by any number of things. Let's say you are sorting your values by the person who has hit more number of six. So you can just write it as the more number of six. I think it from the Rohit Sharma. I hope it would be Rohit. Yeah. So it is Rohit there. So having 52 sixes here, right? Nice. Number of fours is also right. Greater. How many matches he played? So he so it's a test match. This is a test match data. So 42 matches. And this is like how you sort out the values. Right? Okay. So similarly, you can just index out some of the values. Uh, you can make it description. If you see a description of this one, that will be much good. If you just see a describe of this, so that will give you a good one that you will get a. Uh, every row is having some, most probably every row is having some integer and float. So you are getting a good statistics data. It is count stands for the number of data you are having in this uh, innings and then uh, SPD stands for the standard deviation. This uh, mean for minimum values, and max and 75-50% over there. Right? This is how you can locate the things. So, uh, you can write on the things, you can write on the things and then you can do this thing, right? So meanwhile you can import the data to uh, right if you have any data in your uh, you can say in your hard disk. So you can import those things. Let's say this is my let me uh, upload any CSV over there. So let's say this span details CSV. One second, hold on, I'm coming. Yeah, so this is particularly the data which I am going to import is created by a girl, right? She yeah. has made it uh, as an as her internship project, right? So that can be a random data, okay? So let's say this is bank. So bank details are there, so PD. Um, so for importing a data, see guys, you will have to write it as PD dot read and whatever the format you are reading let it be a csv let it be an html right so i'm using csv and the data name is i think bank details dot csv 
think it's so. Let me check it. It's bank hyphen details dot cc fine. So bank details cc nice. So let's see her data. So she's having twenty nine out there. Okay, that's grade one. So let's see the info first. So she's having some thirty entries, all right, and some columns. Then okay, account number, pin name, branch name, branch number, phone number, email ID, age, address, balance. Good. Okay. So no null values again. That's good. Object are five. Integers are five. Equal ratios. Memory uses. So let's just. Uh, see the head of this data and get to understand more. So account number is there, pin is there, uh, name are there, branch names, branch number four, phone numbers, email ID, age, balance, and like this. So you are asked now. Let's say you have a data of this bank. Then you are asked to find out who is having the most number of balance now. Who is having? Uh, so by the end of the month, which person is having the most number of balance in his account? Well, that can be a good question. So how you say that? So that person will be only the balance. So this is the person who is having the maximum number of balance by the end of the month. Okay, that is I will sorting the values and I will find only the one. Okay, the only one and he is having around oh, he is having ninety two lakhs, ninety six lakhs in his account. Correct? Uh, yeah, he is having ninety six lakhs. That's great. I should contact him, right? Girl or a boy? Okay, she's a female, I think. So you can contact on this number there. Okay, so this is a like the most number of balance having by the end of the month. So how to get the least number of balance, right? So again, you can just pass on these things. Or who is the most aged person in the bank? You can just check it out. Uh, like this, write it as age. I think it's age over there. Ages. So you can pass on this A D E. So the aged. Uh, let's say now we are trying to find the younger one. So the youngest is this very years old boy, I think. Branch name Mahalakshmi account good, and this is his data right. So you can find out the things. So how many email ID a bank is having? If a user is trying to log in, how you can get his his login credentials to him? I can give his login credentials. I can let him in inside his bank and his load and let him know his numbers and all those things. I can give that uh, data. So for that, what you will do is you will be uh, doing some procedures, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. So you'll be doing some of the procedures over there. Uh, how? That is interesting, right? Let's say I want to find the number of email ID I am having in my bank. I want this data, or uh, how many customers? Email, what are the email ID of the customers I am having? Okay. So will be this customer email, and that will be a list, okay? And that will be a let's say set. Okay. Hmm. So this is set. Similarly, let's take password or let's take the pin. And pin could be same or not. 
then might be same i think it could be might be same let's take the glass first account number will not be same so let's make this as also a account number fine name it as custom email as not defined oh yeah exactly so let's make this first all right so see yeah this is not defined now that's right exactly so what will be my customer's email now let's say only this email what will be the email of the customers that will be the bd I think that when as email underscore id let's go to email underscore id dot values first let's remove this as things okay let's first remove these things I just say this is email. Let's see email. So that is good. These much emails are there. Nice. So let's convert this to be a um, list. And then. see our email now these are the emails nice similarly we'll go with the passwords so with the password we'll go with the same things copy create passwords say to be a list um, oh sorry to be a pen say this as bd this to be a pen and dot the values this pen to be a set of pen and this pen are o oh, o oh, let's say this to be a list of pen because pen might be same Okay, pin is fine. Similarly, we'll take for the account number. So that is how. Uh, actually, I gave someone to make a project on bank system, right? So. She make it like this, and that is exactly correct method. So account info and then the values in there is uh, account always must be a set. Nice. So we are having some account numbers. We are having email number, uh, emails, and their pin over there, right? So that is correct. Now let's say. We'll make a small program from this data, and we'll try to see the real world issues. Okay, so let's say a user is coming for login there. Friend like, welcome to SBI, uh, like anything, right? SBI India. Okay, so. We'll try to uh, take the uh, ATM, right? Let's say this is an ATM, and what I'll do is he'll write his uh, account number and he'll insert his account number, right? So we don't have any options to insert it. 
So we'll uh, take his account number and we'll now write his pin over there to access the, uh, the contents, right? So let's say his account number will be uh, input. Enter your account number, right? So ACNO is enter your account number. Like if I say if this ACNO lies in the uh, lies in this email. Sorry, lies in this AC. So if this account number lies in that account, my that's you can say that uh, in my uh, database, right? So if this if the user account number is lying in my uh, database, then I'll say to enter the password. Uh, sorry, enter the pin. So that would be enter pin and um, if this pin lies in the pin we are having so if it lies in this so if this happens here we'll just print login success okay but if it is not same, we'll print on invalid pin, right? Similarly, here what we can do is we can print email to not find. Our email is not registered with us. Like the email is not registered. Enough. So for that, I see some email numbers or account numbers over there. So let's say this account number is AC one zero four two. AC one zero four two. Okay. Find experience one five three seven. So it's asking for the pin. Um, the pin is one five three seven with one five three seven. Oh, that is an invalid pin. There is one there. Why it is an invalid? Might be uh, the pin is found in pin. AC one zero four two one five three seven. So actually, it was a integer format, and I was checking it with the. STR formats, so that would be problematic. So I converted this in. Now what you can do, even also what you can do is, you can say that, uh, you can say to your user, right? You can say to the user that, see, uh, you might have some issues if, if you're having some login invalid attempt. So you can just pass on these things. If it is if pin is invalid, you can just try to find this uh, data over there. You can make a dictionary of this, right? You can make a dictionary of like that. Let's say this is a small data I'm making. This is having account number as this is ACNO. Similarly, this is the pin I'm having.
there is pin and the email is this email. So I'll have to do one particular thing because this set might could not create this. So we'll have to remove this. Let it be as this it is. Have to do these things. So that could be a list one, pen one, as my common numbers. Let's run. Now, all right. So, looking good. <laughs> okay. So, if I see a data frame on this, where it is. That's good. So you can see we generated our data of this particular one. We can also generate this by just by indexing the values, right? We can also generate the same thing just by using some methods of this account number, this branch name, and this email ID just by writing these things. Okay. So let me stop your videos.